Hello everyone, hope you are well. It's been a while since we haven't uploaded a video. Don't worry, from this point forward, we are going to learn some new technology. I'm going to create some tutorials for technologies that is on trending such as blockchain development, artificial intelligence. Moreover, we are going to update our previous tutorial so you can cope up with that easily. In this video, we are going to learn about WebRTC. WebRTC is a technology that enables peer-to-peer -peer connection between devices without needing a middleman, such as a server. It is widely used for applications like video calls, voice chat, and file sharing. Here are some of the popular examples of WebRTC of the application that is using WebRTC technology behind the scene. Google Meet, a video conferencing tool that uses WebRTC for high-quality video calls. Zoom offers real-time video meetings and webinars leveraging WebRTC for some features. Microsoft Teams utilizes WebRTC for real-time communication in team collaboration. Discord provides Real-time voice this. Slack uses WebRTC for video and voice calls within team communication. Before learning about WebRTC, we need to learn about UDP protocol. Because WebRTC works on UDP protocol, UDP is like sending a letter by regular mail. It might not arrive in perfect condition or at all, but it is fast. This is important for real-time communication where speed is critical such as in video calls where a little lag can make the conversation awkward. We usually use TCP protocol for our web browsing. So we need to learn about the differences between TCP and UDP protocol. TCP is a type of connection oriented protocol. On the other hand, UDP is connectionless. In terms of re reliability, TCP ensures data transfer with error correction or order delivery. On the other hand, UDP adds Reliability feature on top of UDP, but doesn't guarantee deliver or order by itself. In terms of flow control, TCP manages data transmission to prevent congestion. In contrast, UDP implements custom flow control and congestion management. Let's see some of the examples of TCP protocol. For web browsing, we use HTTP or HTTPS server that guarantees that web page load correctly, which run on TCP protocol. Another example of TCP protocol is email, SMTP, IMAP, or POP3 server. Those are TCP protocol that ensures emails are delivered accurately. Let's see some of the examples of UDP, UDP, UDP protocol. Streaming media such as YouTube, Netflix, that allows smooth playback of videos even if some data packet are lost. Those are using UDP, UDP protocol behind the scene for real-time communication. VoIP, VoIP online gaming provides a low latency interaction, prioritizing speed over perfect data in integrity. All the services use UDP protocol. Before learning about WebRTC, we need to learn about public and private IP. What is public IP addresses? What is private IP addresses? Before that, we need to learn about IP address. An IP address is a unique identifier assigned to take each device connected to a network. What is public IP? Public IP address is a globally unique IP address assigned to a device that is directly assignable over the internet. Public IP address is usually assigned by internet service provider or network administrator. For example, when you visit a website, your request is sent to the website's public IP address. On the other hand, a private IP address is an IP address that is used within a private network, like a home or office network, and is not routable on the internet. A private IP address is assigned by routers or network administrator within a private network. Here you can see a, pub a public IP address is assigned to the router and the router has assigned many private IP addresses to the device that is connected to the router. To make a video call or voice call by WebRTC, we need a stand run or I servers. Stand server. How stun server works? When you start a video call, your device sends a request to a stun server which replies with your IP address, public IP address, and port number. This information helps in establishing a direct connection between two devices. If a direct connection falls due to the strict firewalls or net restrictions, stun server rely on the media between two participants. This ensures that the video call or voice call can still be established and maintained. Even if a direct, even if a direct peer to peer connection is it possible now let's talk about ice server how is ice server work gather candidate each participant gather possible connection options candidate which include direct and relay paths test candidates they test those options to see which one works best establish connection the most effective path 
direct or relight is chosen to establish the video call. We need i server to find the best way to connect two devices by combining stun and turn server. Here is the step by step process to make a video call via WebRTC. First of all, you need to initialize. The process start when two users want to connect, like setting up a video call, each user's browser being the WebRTC setup. In the second step, we need to send signal. This is like exchanges contact information through a friend. The two device share details about how to connect, often using a server as an intermediary like a messaging service. The third step is session description protocol or SDP. Once the connection information is exchanged, both users know how to reach each other. SDP is like agreeing on the language and format for the conversation, ensuring both parties understand each other. ICE candidates. These are potential ways the devices can connect, like suggesting different routes to meet up. The devices test those routes to find the best one. Connection establishment. Once the best path is found, the device connect directly. And the conversation data transfer can begin, like finally making the video call. The last step is data transfer. Now the devices are directly connected and can exchange data in real time. This could be the video, audio, or file being shared during the call. These are the all theories and logic you need to know about WebRTC before going to implement WebRTC technology in your website. I'm going to add a link for the next video where I'm going to, I'm going to create a video chat application using Fast API, Socket IO, and WebRTC. I'm going to use ReactJS for frontend. The video link will be in the description. Thank you for watching this tutorial.